Meanwhile, back to the moment, it's America's birthday weekend celebration in every state, including here in Nevada at Planet Hollywood on the Vegas Strip. What a scene Saturday night on a 4th of July weekend. This town is packed, and maybe some fireworks inside Planet Hollywood Theater, where the holiday crowd is settling in now for our world title main event. A rematch as WBO champion Ricardo Torres puts his title on the line against Kendall Holt in a battle of elite junior welterweights. Nick Charles ringside, so here they are, Holt and Torres, to do it again 10 months later. This time, however, in far less hostile territory for the American Holt. Fighting, of course, in Las Vegas. Holt last time had to go to Torres' hometown in Colombia when they met 10 months ago. That night, Torres came out stalking, but the champion followed Holt around ineffectively, cautious to commit. Holt boxed well and won the early round. Torres rallied and swept a couple of rounds, started to put on more pressure, but then ran into a beautiful counter combination that floored the champion in round six. Then the Colombian crowd got involved, and Holt got nailed by a flying beer can. Holt shook it off, though, and began to pull away in the fight. The champion knew he was behind, went into full offensive mode, and finally broke through in the 11th, dropping Holt. The crowd showered the ring with more liquid. The American recovered. Torres immediately poured on more pressure, though, and with Holt on his feet and still firing back, the referee moved in and stopped the fight. Holt's corner complained that the fight was stopped too soon. What are you doing? I'm, I'm upright. My eyes are wide. I can see everything. I'm not incoherent. Why are you stopping this fight? But I knew he was hurt. He knows he was hurt, and the fight had to be stopped. I mean, that's their job. I did my job, he did his job, and the referee did his job. Nick Charles, Steve Farad. Steve, what did you think of the stoppage? Nick, it was quick, but I've seen worse. You know that uh, I think Holt needs to do now, forget about the bad decisions, the right. crummy conditions. He must focus on the fact, first, he's got to be thrilled he's got a second crack at Torres, and he could win a title tonight. Well, you might say, why is Torres giving him a second shot? The reason, no surprise, money. Torres is getting paid $250,000 for a quarter of a million dollars. He'll take his chances again with Kendall Holt. You know, the first time these guys met last September, they boxed more than they punched. That said, they've been most effectively, both Holt and Torres, their performances, they shine the most when they've gone down but knocked people down. The question then is, is this rematch going to be decided by who boxes better or who punches harder? Well, Nick, I answer that question by asking a question. Is the fight going to be fought along the ropes or in ring center? Holt was along the ropes when he knocked Torres down. Holt was along the ropes when he got knocked down. When Torres almost knocked out Cotto, he was against the ropes. That's where the action is for these guys. Along the ropes, Torres wants to be there. Ring center, Holt has the advantage. Which way do they go? If it's more in ring center, Holt will probably be likely to win a decision. Well, we set it up. Let's meet them both live here in Las Vegas for the rematch, starting with the challenger from New Jersey, 27-year-old Kendall Holt from Patterson. He won three state Golden Glove tournaments, turned pro March 30th, 2001, the same day Ricardo Torres did. Holt's three career best wins all came on Showbox when he stopped David Diaz, decisioned Mike Arnautis, and wiped out Isaac Lachweo. Since the loss to Torres, he won a unanimous decision in February against veteran plow horse Ben Tacky. So it's Kendall Holt with another chance here in Las Vegas. 23 and 2, a dozen KOs. What's behind the numbers, Steve? Well, for Kendall Holt, six falls. Holt's been stopped twice. And he's been dropped six times by Norberto Frias, Thomas Davis twice, David Diaz, Jaime Rangel, and Torres. His chin ain't exactly LaMotta-like. Reluctant puncher. Nobody doubts Holt's punch, but he hasn't stopped anybody in more than three years. His problem, too much foot movement, not enough fist movement. And all was long. Holt's got a minimum of ten rounds in his six most recent fights. That's an odd stat for a fighter who punches hard and doesn't take the best of punches. And now to WBO world champion Ricardo Torres. 
born and lives in Columbia. Started boxing at nine, 135 and five in the amateurs, turned pro seven years ago. He made a colossal U.S. debut in 2005, even though he lost. It was a tremendous battle against Miguel Cotto for the WBO title, Torres now holds. That's the only time this 28-year-old's been beaten. He's won four straight since, including the win over Holt, which was the last time he fought 10 months ago. Ricardo Torres is 32 and 1, 28 by KO. Take us behind those numbers, Steve. Uh, Colombian KOs. Nick, draw your own conclusions. At home, Torres has stopped 27 of 30 opponents. Outside of Colombia, he scored only one stoppage in three bouts. Thrill a minute. In his three biggest fights, Torres was floored by Miguel Cotto, Mike Arnaudis, and Holt, and in turn dropped Cotto and Holt. He's both dangerous and vulnerable. And the longest layoff. Unlike Holt, Torres hasn't fought since their first bout. Ten months off is the longest such stretch in the Colombian's pro career. So ten months later, Ricardo Torres again puts his WBO title belt on the line against American Kendall Holt. It's our Saturday night showbox main event from Las Vegas. So let's go back to ring announcer Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening to you, and we welcome you to Planet Hollywood Resort and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada, for the featured bout of the evening brought to you by Top Rank Incorporated in association with Tecate, Affliction, and Showtime. This bout is sanctioned by the World Boxing Organization, the President Francisco Valcarcel, Supervisor Phil Siegel, along with the Nevada State Athletic Commission, the Chairman is John Bailey, Executive Director Keith Kaiser. Introducing our three judges, scoring this bout from ringside, from Reno, Nevada, Bert Clements, from Las Vegas, Nevada, Dwayne Ford, and also from Las Vegas, Robert Hoyle. Our third man in the ring, our referee in charge, he'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Jay Nady. All right, fans, here we go with our main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing in a rematch for the WBO Junior Welterweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, Live from Planet Hollywood Resort and Casino, Las Vegas, it's showtime! <laughs> Introducing to you first, the challenger on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing silver trunks with red trim, he weighed in at a ready 139 pounds. With a record of 23 wins, two losses, he has 12 wins coming by way of knockout, fighting out of Patterson, New Jersey. Tonight, making his second attempt at a world title, please welcome the WBO number two ranked junior welterweight, introducing Kendall, rated R Holt. And his opponent across the ring on my left, the defending world champion fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks trimmed in the colors of the Colombian flag. He weighed in the same as his opponent, 139 pounds, with a record of 32 wins, one loss. He has 28 big wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, he is making the third defense of his title. Please welcome the WBO Junior Welterweight Champion of the World from Barranquilla, Colombia. Introducing Ricardo Mochuelo Torres. Once again, a referee in charge, Jay Nady, now to give instructions. Ready? 12 rounds, such gloves. Buena suerte. Good luck. Such gloves. Go to work. In Colombia, Holt needed the sauna to make weight. Not the case this time. The big difference in the numbers, Holt, four-inch reach advantage, and he will definitely try and keep the fight at a distance. 
1980 said luck luck may have something to do with it. It sure did the first time according to Holt. He thought he got an early stoppage. We look at the rules here. Unified rules title fight as usual. Ready to go here. Kendall Holt has a second chance. How many guys could say that? And this is in a very real sense could be it for him even at 27 he comes up blasting. Both guys have to be more active and wow Torres is too whipping a left hook as he tries to walk down Holt and a smashing right hand and Holt is down. And the challenger's got to get his legs under him. Hulk fighting back Nick because he has to. He's in trouble. Down twice he gets clipped as he gets up. Now Nate's got to take control. All right. No three knockdown rule. Torres closing in. Big left hook. He's teeing off. Holt's not even gathering himself up to hold on. Trying to fight back now. He's got Torres down. Round of the year candidate. Oh, Torres is down and out. One of the most colossal first rounds we've ever seen in boxing. Torres, let's take a look. Right hand opened him up. And Torres going in for the finish had hold down twice. Kendall Holt is the WBO junior welterweight champion in the round of the year. Hands down, Steve. I think that fight didn't go a minute. Kendall Holt punched back because he had no choice. I was about to say when he landed the knockout punch, he should be holding, not running. You know what? He didn't run, he didn't hold, he punched. He's cut over the right eye, too, Nick. What a shot. It's, you know, when he got up the second time, Jay Nady had his back to him, and he got hit again by Torres. So he was in serious doubt, serious. And thank God we didn't have a repeat of what happened in Vegas in the Umberto Soto fight a week ago because Hope got hit after he got up from that knockdown and before Nady waved them back together and Holt complained that you said the referee needs to take control of the fight that was a clear foul luckily it didn't impact the fight Steve that was so explosive so dynamic but I got to tell you I would like to see a third fight already <laughs> I would Torres had him down twice he ran into a punch a perfect one there is no rematch clause Holt I mean excuse me Torres started this fight the way he started round 11 in Colombia. He attacked very quickly. It made sense because he hurt Holt and stopped Holt by fighting that way in round 11 after being very passive for 10 rounds. Absolutely incredible. Torres was en route to winning this fight. Oh. And that's, I think that's why we love boxing, Nick, oh, because Steve. one shot turned it around. Holt hit a seven-run home run. You're right. Torres, you know, bona fide power, keeping in character. He wants to take you out, and he looked like he had this man out. Holt down twice, hit again on the way up the second time. I was saying the same thing, Steve. He hadn't held on. Maybe he should. And wow, dynamite suddenly from Holt, an explosive right hand. No time for strategy, man. They bull rushed each other. Torres is still on the ground. Nick, in 61 seconds, we saw two knockdowns, one a devastating one, a cut over Holt's eye, and a change in momentum that, as you said, will make this round of the year, if not knockout of the year. Thanks for the opportunity, man. All right, it was so dynamic and powerful in 61 seconds of fury. Kendall Holt went to hell and back. Let's watch it from the beginning. That's what I'm talking about. No grind, no shine. Torres came out and charged him at the bell. Right after him. And he punched with him. Holt gets moved around the ring now. Torres at good right hand. Seven, are you okay? Eight, come, come to me. All right? Box. Watch when he goes down again, Steve. He'll get hit on the way up. 
And there's that shot. That's what could have been, that could have decided the fight right there. But not even a warning from Nady. How to hold, gather his wits, put it all together. Let's watch. Actually, it was that hook and then the right hand. Set him up and then the right hand. We said before, Kendall Holt, no one's ever questioned his power. It took only one. Steve, I almost think I would conjecture that that left hook could have broken a rib or something. As Torres stopped punching after that hook. And what a concussive right hand Kendall Holt landed. I was expecting Torres to get up only because you're a minute into the fight. You don't expect a one-punch knockout. But that's what we got. Oh, I can't see this one enough. This should make every highlight real in history. That was a right hand, overhand right on the button. Holt did not appear to be seriously hurt. He's acknowledging the punch, but he says to Nady by shaking his arms, I'm okay. But didn't you think, Nick, that, that Holt was much more hurt from the second knockdown? Oh, yeah. This one. Yeah, he was starting to wilt, you know. And again, how he pulled himself together. And that left hook landed flush. That could have been a devastating shot. Here it is again. And when he jumps up again, he gets hit. But Nady was picking up the count here and pushing off Torres and didn't see it. Here's the finish. Now watch for the left hook that, that Hulk hook. lands. Right there. Well, I think Torres was just wiped off from that hook. It was a, right about the didn't, right in the stomach. It wasn't look, a liver shot. Yeah, it didn't look that devastating, but of course I didn't catch it. But Torres collapsing in a heap. Watch the right hand coming right. Oh, I think that hook Here. started it big time. That hook just drove Torres into full retreat, opened him up for that right hand that finished him. What a devastating performance. And a devastating loss for Ricardo Torres, but Kendall Holt is the new WBO Junior Welterweight Champion of the World. Let's get the official word from Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of one minute, one second in round number one. He is the winner by way of spectacular knockout. He is the new WBO Junior Welterweight Champion of the World, Kendall Rated R. Holt. Glorious moment then. As Kendall Holt vanquished late in a fight he had won when they met 10 years ago, the, or 10 months ago, the belt within his grasp now has it wrapped around him tonight. Steve Farhood is with the new junior welterweight champion of the world. Kendall, you had 10 months to think about what was going to happen in the ring tonight. I don't think you thought this was going to happen, did you? I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't think he was going to drop me twice, but as you know... I don't back down. I lay backs down. Uh, I got a momentarily distracted. He caught me with a punch I didn't see coming. Um, I knew from the first round he was going to come after me because that's what I would have did. Seeing how he came after me uh, in the previous fight, the first fight, and he had, he, had, he had good success and coming strong. I expect that we, we practiced for him to come strong in the first round. And he did, and he was very successful with it. The obvious question, how hurt were you? The first knockdown, it didn't look too bad. The second knockdown, you looked hurt. Take a look at the monitor, and we'll watch it together here. Bring it up. I want to see. This is the first knockdown, Kendall. That was right. I mean, I was, I was okay. I was okay. I was okay. Fly. All right, Kendall, we're going to the second knockdown. Watch what happens. Not only as you get knocked down, but as you get up. I, I, I was slipping. I mean, I, I wouldn't call that a knockdown because, I mean, we, we it was, you know, it was, uh, I was off balance and 
throwing punches at the same time, trying to keep him at bay. So I wouldn't call that a knockdown. But as you know, and I said it before, I don't back down. I lay backs down. I've been down before, and I get back up. All right, the finish of the fight right here. Watch your left hook to start it. Ooh. Look at that. Slip, slip, boom. Oh, we was practicing that. Damn, we was practicing that. Bend in the knees. Damn, we was practicing that. You see what we was practicing? practicing. That's what my man said. Yo. Bend in the knees. Damn, we practiced. Look at that. God bless him. God bless Ricardo Torres because th- I said the same thing when David Diaz, I was at his fight, and he fell against Pacquiao. God bless fighters who fall like that because sometimes fighters, they don't come back the same. So God bless him. It looked like the left hook to the body hurt him for sure. Did you sense that? No, I didn't. I was just, uh, I knew I was, I was, I know he was coming after me. I, I, I knew I had to uh, at least, at least try to win the round being knocked down twice. You know, I wasn't going to win enough points, but at least stop it from being a 10-7, maybe a 10-8. The knockout punch, describe the feeling as you landed it. You sense that it was a, a, a the punch to finish I, I, the fight? Once I seen him, I, I didn't see him um, move, move forward um, at the three count. I knew I knew he wasn't getting back up. I knew because, um, let me tell you, since after the David Diaz fight, on um, my shoulder, I've been getting, I've had calcium deposits, and it never it never felt it never felt good. I had a mini camp with Teddy Cruz and Pisek at Pisek PAL, and I just worked it and worked it in mini camp. And then when I went to training camp, I just worked it and worked it. And I, I had Grace Barn and Steve Martinez and uh, Chris Gray. It, it was just a, a strong, hard, tough, wonderful camp. Does Barranquilla, Colombia seem like a long time ago now, Ken? You know what? It, it, it did after, after my last fight, and I, I was just really done with it. Your story, we've talked about it. You were brought up in foster homes. Professionally, you had it difficult. It took a while. This is your second shot at the title. You couldn't have imagined scoring a victory any more impressively. Just describe your emotions right now a little bit. Well, first, I want to give thanks to God because I haven't thanked God. I should have did that first. I want to thank God, and I want to, I want to thank my mother for keeping my son while I was in seven-week training camp. I want to thank my father for introducing me to the boxing game. But, um, you know, I, I, I came out here prepared. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't cut any corners in training camp. I had longer, tougher sparring, uh, more pad work, more running. And, you know, I, I was prepared to fight. We, we practiced boxing, but we, we, also, we also practiced fighting. I'm not so, so sure after suffering that kind of knockout that Torres would want you again. But he stopped you once, albeit controversially. You've now knocked him out once. Rubber match? You know, it sounds good. I mean, it's, it's, it's up to my team. Whatever Bob Arum wants. If uh, that's what Bob Arum and my, and my manager, uh, Henry Cortez, and uh, my, my trainer, Terrific, if, if they think that's, if that's, if that's uh, the best thing, um, then we do it. Tommy Brooks once told me, he said, if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. So if it's not going to bring me no dollars, it ain't going to make sense to do it. Anybody else you're looking at in the junior welterweight division? Uh, I'm just, I just want to wanna, uh, let the world know that I'm from Patterson, New Jersey, and uh, there's another welterweight coming up, and that's Henry Crawford, and after him is Jeremy Bryan. I, I, did my, I paved the way for him, so I want to see those guys come up here and do his thing now. Well, right now there's only one fighter from Patterson, New Jersey, and that's Kendall Holt. Congratulations. Let's get back to Nick at ringside. Steve, Steve Kendall Holt thanks a lot of people, including Almighty God. I want to thank him for 61 seconds of searing action. He's new champion of the world.